Good morning, Andrea. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you today. And for those listening, I am actually looking at Andrea. We decided, so um, I, with each of my guests, I say, hey, do you want to get on video and look at each other and have a conversation? Or you just want to do it audio and I leave it to the guest. And Andrea decided that we, we wanted to look at each other today. So I'm actually looking at you and you're actually looking at me. So this is a delight. So it's great, great to literally see you and talk to you on this Monday morning on April 19th, 2021. How was the weekend? Oh, the weekend was amazing. It was my birthday. Oh, look at that. Happy birthday. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. So uh, it was it was wonderful. My husband arranged a month-long celebration since he couldn't throw me a surprise party oh. in the pandemic. He arranged little little gatherings with fellow vaccinated folks. And uh, and so we started last weekend. We celebrated all of this weekend and we're celebrating again all of next weekend. So. Wow. I- I think you've, I think you picked a good husband. That's impressive. And, and what I found out was and my birthday is April 17th and April 17th is husband appreciation day. Well, there you go. And so I told my husband, even though he was doing all this stuff for me, that how much I appreciated him. And, oh. and, and I have this like stupid grin on my face. Cause I really had such a great time, you know, yeah. seeing some people and talking to people and all the messages on social media. And, and I had a friend who, we stopped by and brought a present, another friend who sent something and, you know, it just seeing my family. It, yeah. I, listen, I can't complain. It's all good. That's awesome. Well, I'll wish you a happy belated. I had no idea because I don't think we're connected on Facebook. So that would be why. Uh, that's will, the only way I know anybody's birthday. That. We will fix we'll that. Right fix that. We'll fix that by the end of the episode. So Andrea, let's get right into it. And I know we have a lot to talk about today. So I'd love if you'd kick us off with um, who you are, a little, just a little bit about what you do and where you're located. Uh, well, let's see who I am. I am a, um, I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a daughter and I am a publicist. So I own Andrea Pass Public Relations. That's what I do for my living. Uh, I've been a solopreneur for three years now, but I've been in the public relations field for over 30 and uh, I love what I do. So you never work a day in your life when you love what you do. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm just one of these people that tries to look at the glass as it overflows. Very cool. I think you might be the first guest and no knock on any other guest that started with the roles that they play that have nothing to do with how they make a, make a living. You know, I think that, that, you know, you look at what you do and it's like, do you work do you live so you could work or do you work so yeah. you could live? And yeah. I think that, and, and uh, years and years ago, I had a bully boss. I mean, just a total bully. Yeah. And I worked a million hours and it, it was just terrible. But I went to a lecture by Mitch Albom, uh, Tuesdays with Maury, Seven People yeah. in Heaven, Detroit yeah. Free Press, you know. Yeah. And he said, at the end of your life, and I know it sounds a little morbid, but at the end of your life, no one's going to say, oh, she saved that company tens of thousands of dollars or she won that award. They're going to say, that's a good person. That person, I really yeah. liked that person. And that put my whole world in perspective. And I obviously, I left that job very soon after that. Yeah, and, you. and I, I said, so. this is crazy. I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, live so I can work. I want to work so I can live. Yeah, and, Ab- and absolutely. I think that, and, and my family means the world to me. Very nice, Andrea. Well, let's, let's get into it. And I, I always like to say this at the top of the show. Some people I interview are very good friends. Some people I have had maybe a, an hour conversation. Some people I've never talked to before. Andrea happens to be somebody that I've spent maybe an hour with one-on-one, a little more time outside of that. And I think hopefully by the end, we'll become better friends, which is always, which is always my goal. So here we go. Here we go. Um, so I'm, so as I ask you these questions and I say that for the audience, because I'm going to learn about you just like they're going to learn about you. I'm I'll, I don't know any of these things about you, which is great. Um, so Andrea, what's something that you nerd out about? Oh my goodness. And, and this is, uh, I watch general hospital. I am a total <laughs> geek. I love my soap operas. I was all upset when all my children in one life to live went off the air, but since college and since, since first VHS tapes and, and then DVR, I've been recording general hospital. I'm about three weeks behind. But yeah, I'm, I'm just a total soap opera nerd. <laughs> nice. This is a good example of something I know know almost nothing about. I don't know that I've seen, other than maybe sitting at a doctor's office or something, I don't know that I've ever seen one minute 
of one episode of a daytime soap opera. And the only thing that comes to mind for me that I know about General Hospital is wasn't James Franco on there for a while? Wasn't he? Didn't yes, he have a role? He was in there? very that's good. Because I love James Franco. So that's the only thing I that's like, I'm like, oh yeah, James Franco. Yeah. People who, who know soap operas know Luke and Laura. They know the okay. whole story of Luke and Laura. And when Luke yeah. and Laura got married, I was in college. I did have a car on campus, but in those days, I'm dating myself, they had a TV room. And I couldn't get into the TV room. So I ran to my car to drive back to my apartment and I missed the wedding. But of course there were no such things as, you know, VHS or right. DR or anything. You missed it, you missed it. And um, and so, yes, I was very upset about that. But, but I, um, to this day, still watch General Hospital as does my sister and a few of my friends so we can have conversations about, about General Hospital. So- yeah. I admit it. I admit it. I feel like I'm coming clean now. Yeah, here we go. This is this is cathartic for you. <laughs> um, I actually something that popped into my mind that I'm curious about is so the whole thing with soap operas back in the day was to give provide people who are home in the middle of the day something to do, but with DVRs it isn't really a thing anymore. So is it still do you still like to try and catch it when it airs in the middle of the day or is it more like mm-hmm. oh I'm going to I'm going to is it more like, like, do people binge soap operas now? Like, I'm curious, because that would be a real, a real change from how originally they were built for. Yeah. And they were originally called soap operas because the advertisers advertised soap products. And, and what was the opera part of that? Do you, so, any idea? Uh, you know, I think that it was just like it was, it was, uh, you know, a short story back then. Okay. So it was on the radio and it was 20 minutes and then it grew and grew to be the one hour format. But I have um, I have not watched uh, I don't watch TV in the middle of the day because I'm right. busy you know working in my public relations business. Yeah. But um, I I I tape it and then I'll watch a few on the weekends and if there's a story I don't like I'll fast forward through it uh, those sort of things. But but yeah no I, I haven't watched a live as it's happening show in a long time. I would imagine it does. Do, do they still air? every every day like at one o'clock or or whatever so they've kept that schedule yeah it's every single day so I guess people were home and the reason I first started watching soap operas it was all my children and I was a kid I guess in middle school junior high and it was the only thing on at that time of the day when you were homesick okay you know there was no game show or what have you to watch so I started watching and then became hooked and suddenly found yeah. that I had friends, but I only watched when I was homesick. So, cause you didn't tape anything back then. Yeah. So, so it's just kind of funny, but it's, uh, uh, my husband actually did a Jeopardy game for my birthday. He oh, did Andrea Jeopardy. Jeopardy. And actually one of the questions that he asked was, you know, what have I watched for over 40 years or whatever? And one of my friends actually knew what it was. My sister knew when we did the game again oh, with course. the family. My sister didn't skip a beat, but it yeah. was just very funny. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I hmm, I don't know if I have any more questions about that. It, I, I love this show because it's a good example of something I know almost nothing about. It's like, I know about it from just being a human in the world and hearing things and seeing commercials and such, but it's just not something that I've, I'm just not interested, but I, I think it's also, but it's also, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's probably something quite nostalgic about it and quite almost like, it's, it's like a comfort. It's almost like a real comfort to be like, oh, these characters. And I kind of yeah. like, is it, I would imagine it's it very is. cathartic. Well, the thing is some of these characters have been around. I, I think the show, I can't remember how many years the show is on, like a long, long time. Yeah. And some of these characters have been on for, you know, you saw them as, as, you know, like a teenager and now they're the grandparent and, and they've been on forever. And, and, and Laura, you know, of Luke and Laura, Laura's still on the show. So you look at those characters and the thing about a soap opera is even if you didn't DVR it, if you put it down, you don't watch for a few months or even a year or two, you go back, you're going to see familiar faces. So yeah. it's uh, it's that sort of thing, but um, very cool. But I, I, I love it. And like I said, I'm quite a number of weeks behind schedule. So yeah. I need to find some downtime, which my downtime is now that the weather's getting warmer, you know, seeing family and friends outdoors. Right. So I'd rather do that than watch TV. Yeah, for sure. Uh, last question about this is general hospital is an ABC show. Is that right? It is. is it ABC. still filmed? In, is it still filmed on the upper West side? Cause I, uh, no, really... no, it's uh, a, a general hospital was always LA based. 
Got it. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Upper West Side was all my children in one life to live. Right. I knew they filmed some stuff there, but okay. Um, and I have some more questions, but I'm going to move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am liable to go down the rabbit hole or the rat hole of all these uh, interesting topics I know nothing about. And I think the audience will go, yeah, I'm not going to listen anymore. Jason asking oh, Henry a question. Yeah, let's go on. Okay. What's the thing that's inside your comfort zone that might be outside of somebody else's? Ooh, that's a great question because I think it's it's spontaneous public speaking. Even here being mm-hmm. your guest, there are so many people that are not comfortable being recorded or you know being on a video when it's a video or speaking in front of an audience. So I think that I could... Someone could say to me, Andrea, you know, we have thousands of people in the audience and we're running behind schedule, but we need someone to go out there. Could you go talk? And I would just get on the stage and talk if I had to. So I have that comfort zone of public speaking, which, of course, is uh, it's the number two fear behind going to the dentist. Dentist is number one, which I I am terrified. I hate the dentist. I am terrified of the dentist. Uh, But public speaking is number two behind the dentist. And, it's and not even, death anymore because I thought it used to be death. No, no, that was never on the list. Never on the list. Even years and years ago when I had actually researched more for a client of mine, it was always, you know, dentist or doctor or something and then yeah. public speaking. So, so you know, these are things that you can't do without in life. You will have to go to the dentist in your life. And at some point you will be public speaking, whether you are doing it for your business or you're giving uh, a speech at a wedding, you will at some point speak in front of an audience. And so for me, I'm glad that's not a fear of mine. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, are are you a Seinfeld fan? Not really. Uh, There were a few episodes here and there, but no, I really can't quote Seinfeld. Well, he has a, the reason I ask is he has a, he has a pretty funny quote about this. I I actually just looked it up. I pulled it up and I'm not going to try and do a Seinfeld imitation here i'm just going to read just going to read in my own voice according to most studies people's number one fear is public speaking number two is death death is number two does that sound right that means to the average person if you go to a funeral you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy <laughs> oh my that's goodness pretty good. very funny. that's pretty good what um so let's take a look at the other side of that question and so andrew what's something for you that is outside of your comfort zone that's likely going to be inside of somebody else's Outside of my comfort zone and inside of somebody else's. Well, you know, I guess it could be something sports related. I mean, I I love going out, you know, biking and snorkeling, uh, you know, but I wouldn't do scuba because Mm -hmm. I would be so afraid. I like to be on top of the water, not all the way under the water. So I guess all those people that, that, you know, who swim and dive and go under the water. And I just stay on the top of the water, but I still love the water. Uh, So I guess, uh, you know, I'm always going to have that fear of, of being under the water. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Does that include even in a pool? You just, you just don't like going underwater? No, even in a pool. When I was, I, I, I blame my uncle, uh, may he rest in peace. He, he used to take me and my cousin, who's a few months older than I, and he would take our heads and shove us under the water when we were little. We thought that was funny and it, it traumatized me my whole life. So um, I could certainly jump off, you know, the side of the boat, you know, with my fins and everything when I'm going snorkeling, you know, and you pop under and then you pop right up. Yeah. But I don't, I don't go under the water, but I love, I love the Caribbean. I love the water. I'm glad the water, the weather's getting warmer and I cannot wait to get to the Jersey shore to be by the water, but I will not be diving into the waves. You will not be diving into the waves. There you go. I, I'll give you an example of something that I'm pretty sure is outside of your comfort zone and is outside of almost everybody else on the planet's comfort zone. So my episode from six weeks ago, six or seven weeks ago, uh, Raymond Brin, he is rowing from New York to Ireland with two other guys in a 20 foot rowboat in May. You and know, I said, I, that's I, insane. I, but, I, but I'm amazed. I have a client of mine, Mike Shorman, who I think you're going to be speaking to. Yeah, um, yeah he's going to be on the show next yeah. week. Or even this, Mike, no, this Friday, actually. Yeah, and Mike is a paddleboarder, but he, he and you'll, you'll learn more about this, but he ended up having a stroke due to Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, which is 
like a chicken pox virus that comes back. Yeah. And he is actually going to be paddle boarding from New York State to Canada what? over the summer. And he will be doing this. He's he's sitting on the paddle board. He can't stand because he can't balance. His whole balance was thrown off. Yeah. His stroke. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you look at at these people that do these these things like rowboat across the Atlantic or, or uh, you know, paddleboard from New York to, to Canada or or Crazy. these people who who bicycle across the country. And it's I'm always amazed and in it's awe amazing. of people that, that do these things. But hey, listen, my biggest was I was on a cruise ship a few years ago and I did the zip line across the pool. So that was so here I was, you know, the all of the 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 15, 20 seconds that it took and I would never right. have to zip line again. I also heard, you know, when I when I think of really getting outside of your fear, uh, cruise ships are not generally the place that people go to conquer their fears. They're kind of the uh, the reverse. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. nothing to fear. Well, maybe not true with uh, pandemic last year, but cruise ships, I feel like, for the most part, are like the safest place. It's like you're going to have your food, you're going to have your drink, you're going to have your little cabin, and we're going to give you all these activities, and we're going to make sure that everything exactly taken care of. There's not a whole lot that can go wrong here if you just like pay attention to us. Yeah, but I mean, they did have the zip line and they do have that, like, uh, you stand on the, the surfboard with the waves. I won't oh, do yeah. that. You won't, won't so you won't even do that. Yeah. No, I won't do anything that you could fall. So I don't Got see, it. I don't ice skate. I, 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 I'm I so afraid of falling. My biggest fear is falling. And so I'll yeah. bicycle ride, but I won't, I won't do anything that you would possibly fall. And which is silly because you could fall and be just fine, but yeah. I... I'm there you go. By the falling. So I'm not going to ice skate or ski or rollerblade. And that's okay. I have enough other things I do. Exactly. It's not like you're like a shut in at your house. You just pick other ways to do that. I just pick other things to do. I love it, Andrea. That's cool. Um, all right. So it, you mentioned public speaking and I, my, I don't know this for a fact, but I would guess that in your career and now you do a lot of speaking, you've done a lot of speaking in your career, some way, shape or form, whether it be on media appearances speaking to people that you know, or even getting paid to speak. And I, I don't know that part about your career. But the question is, <clears throat> if I give you five minutes, and you can think of this as Andrea's five minute TEDx, and it's five minutes, you get to speak on whatever you want. And we all get to hear it. All of us being everybody in the world gets to hear this speech, and we get to hear your message. What would you talk about? And what would be your call to action for us as the audience? What would you want us to do? Well, I definitely would talk about public relations because public relations is the most misunderstood in the marketing communication category. Oh, really? Uh, people, okay. People think public relations is, oh, you're the publicist for Kim Kardashian. And they don't quite understand that it's not all about red carpets and uh, celebrity interviews. Every single business, author, entrepreneur, uh, consumer product should have a public relations person with a public relations campaign, because public relations is all about staying relevant by using the media to do so. So in PR, it's earned media coverage. In advertising, you pay for it. Yeah. In PR, someone else is talking about you. In advertising, you're talking about you. Isn't it better when someone else is applauding your product or your book or your service? That's giving you a better testimonial. Yeah. Instead of you telling everyone, hey, I'm going to I'm great. I'm going to pat myself on the back. And that's where public relations differs. So if I had that forum, public relations is what I talk about, because so many people are business people or, like I said, authors or consumer product inventors or entrepreneurs. And they didn't realize that to be out there and to stay relevant, especially with with social media, you want to be able to post interviews you did or articles you were featured in yeah. or reviews of your product or your book, because then that's going to give you that extra bump in potential buyers for your product or your book and potential clients for your business. Yeah. So yeah. if I had five minutes, public relations is the way to go. And I there would you talk go. about public relations. And what would you want the audience to do with your speech? What would you want them to do with the knowledge they just learned? Well, my call to action really is reach out to Andrea Past Public Relations and let's have a one-on-one. -on -one and I'll tell you how public relations could benefit your business. So my call to action is for you to recognize that you should put money in your marketing budget aside for public relations. Yeah. And if that's something you're interested in doing, well, you should reach out to me because I'm going like to do it for you. So, and, and I always get that call to action thing 
uh, is is so important. There are so many people totally. who are doing a discussion with someone that forget to say, oh, the name of my book is, or don't forget <laughs> my product is at, or, you know, I, you know, I, I'm a tax accountant and the extension for taxes has been extended. If you still haven't filed, reach out to me. I can fit you in. Right. And there, you know, people who don't realize what the call to action is and how important the call to action is in your message. Absolutely. I was I was thinking how meta this is that I asked you about public speaking and then you would use your speech to actually promote yourself and be your own PR agent. What I didn't what I didn't tell you though is whether you paid to get the five minutes for me or it was free. So, uh. <laughs> but I think either way either way it would be good. Um, and we're going to talk a lot more about PR when we come back from the break because I know this is a this is a topic that I'm personally interested in, something that you are an absolute expert in, and I have no doubt the audience want to hear that as well. So, Andrea, we're going to take a really brief commercial break, and we'll be right back after this. The Talking to Cool People podcast is brought to you by Jason Frizzell Coaching. Jason works with amazing people who are looking to find and develop their passion and purpose and create their journey to wherever it is they want to go. Check us out at jasonfrizzell.com, Facebook, or on Instagram. Jason loves hearing from anyone who thinks it would be cool to connect, to be coached, or to be a guest on our show. Email him at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com or DM him on Facebook and Instagram. And now, back to some more amazing conversation on talking to cool people. All right, Andrea, we are back from the break. And this is the part of the show where I gave you a nice, broad, and general question that may you may either love or you may hate, depending on your personality. <laughs> so, Andrea, what would you like the audience to know about you? It's such a, you're right, it's such a broad, broad category on what I want people to know about me. I, I think that I like to see the glass as it overflows. That's what I want people to know about me. Uh, you know, we can all be woe is me and yep. see as the glass is half empty and we've gone through a really horrible time over the past year plus, but I want people to know about me that I look at the positive and I'm always very honest, you know, in networking groups, when they say, oh, come up with a word using the first letter of your first name. And I say authentic because yeah. I'm going to tell people the way it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat things and I'm going to set expectations realistically. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing that, I'm looking at, you know, the glass approaching that overflows because I'm going to steer you in the right direction, whether it's personal or business. And I, I think that that's, you know, I look at those things and I look at how thankful and lucky that I am that, you know, my family is is very close here and mm -hmm. my friends are doing well and there have been blips in the road, but that's sure. life. Yep. And the most important thing is to to be happy and to to be able to translate that happiness to other people and positivity because the negativity isn't going to get us anywhere. Yeah. It's it's to have that situation and to always be negative or always look at something negatively. And there are times I'm just want to pull my hair out when, when people get so negative about things, when we really need to be positive because that's, what's going to help move us forward. So I think that if there's one thing about me, whether it's, it's my personal life or my Andrea past public relations life, it's the positivity setting expectations and always going for the gold. Yeah, man, I have so many questions running through my mind right now. Um, I'm going to start with an observation. And it's kind of a question, kind of an observation. My observation is that I'll bet this is one of your superpowers as a publicist and a PR professional. Yeah, I hope I hope it is. I hope yeah. it is because, you know, I'll, I'll have I had a funny conversation, a new business call with an author, first time author, fiction. And she says, well, I'm just going to hire you because I want to be in People Magazine and Entertainment Weekly. And I said to her, no one knows you. This is your first book. It was coming out in four weeks. I said, People Magazine and Entertainment Weekly run reviewing things three plus months in advance. We would have had to have gotten them a copy of the book, <clears throat> The Ark, three plus months in advance. Yeah. For you to hire me and us to send something to them, it's going to sit in a pile. It's never going to be reviewed. You have to be realistic and get reviews other places. And and she, that was the end of the conversation. Of course, I don't plan on speaking to her ever again and she's <laughs> not going to hire me. But I guess my superpower is, is that 
setting expectations, being right. realistic, being positive. We can get you press coverage. It. Yeah. I will try for People Magazine, but I can't guarantee it'll be People Magazine. Yeah. Well, so this kind of leads me into the the thing I wanted to dig um, both selfishly, but also I have no doubt that the audience, when they see the title of this episode, they're going to want to know, because I think this is something that is quite honestly for a lot of us, myself included, not if you're not a PR person and you don't have a PR person, there's a bit of, there's a bit of mystery to it for me. So I want to ask you, um, and I want to relate this back to what you said about authenticity. This is just an, an assertion and it's maybe it's the way that I see the industry as a whole. My guess is there are lots of PR professionals that would have that conversation go, no problem. I'll get you in people. You know it, you know it. And there, yeah. and, and unfortunately, especially entrepreneurs or solopreneurs that don't have a big budget, find that they've hired some of these people and they've gotten practically nothing in return. Yeah. And that, uh, listen, if they, if those PR people could sleep at night, all right, whatever. But to yeah. me, I would never take money for a client that I knew I couldn't produce for that client. Right. But but and there are a lot of PR people and companies, and they say, oh, or you can do this on your own. You don't need to hire a PR person. You can do it on your own. Well, okay, try to do it on your own. But I wouldn't do my own dental work. I go to the dentist. <laughs> I wouldn't cut my own hair. I go to the salon to have my hair cut. So you go to experts. I, to I, do these things in your life. And you're not an expert at public relations. Someone like me is. So you hire someone who knows how to do that. I mean, we're, I was mentioning uh, during the break to you, we're waiting for a roofer to come. We had a leak in, a leak in our roof. We wouldn't replace our own roof. <laughs> we're hiring an expert. I mean, so, you could, but yeah, the results. Pro- like- <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'd be able to handle that. We'd have more leaks in the end. Exactly, yeah. But you hire an expert to help you grow your business. And in business, we need to hire people. We can't do it all. We're not experts at everything. And that's right. You have to find the people who are experts. <clears throat> you know, you hire a business coach who is an expert at being a business coach. They're going to help you grow your business. You hire a lawyer or an accountant uh, or a real estate agent because you're not going to know all the answers to those questions. That's why people go into different professions. That's right. Yeah. So for those out there who are listening, who could use some public relation, like they have an interest in either, I think most people who own their own businesses would like to be out there more. I think that's kind of likely a foregone conclusion, but maybe not unless they're doing something very sneaky. <laughs> maybe they don't want to be seen. Like there, there's also those professions or, um, they're out there already, but they're not getting the returns that they expect. I have two parts to this question. I'm going to ask, I don't like stacking questions. So I'll ask first, when you have a new client, do you, and this is specifically for you, Andrea, you have a new client, they come in, they say, Hey, Andrea, uh, I'm writing a book. I'm writing a fiction book. Do you have a set rate or do you look at how many hours it's going to take? Like, in other words, when people are looking for PR professionals, how is it how is it generally priced and how do you know what you're getting for that cuz to me pr is um it's it's a very subjective thing sometimes right you cuz you can't say well i was on this podcast and because of this podcast i got five new clients cuz most clients aren't going to tell you where they heard they may tell you where they came from but they may not so it's a, there's some subjectivity in there so i guess the first question is what is the general pricing model in public relations and how do you know what you're getting for that for that spend it's it's definitely a tough question because PR agencies and PR sole practitioners work differently. So it's it's definitely a sliding scale. I work on a monthly retainer basis for a minimum of six months because it takes time for something to happen. So I meet someone, I schedule an interview, uh, that interview might air the next day or it might not run for three months. I'm making sure that 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 person who did the interview has the right links, make sure they're tagging you on social, has the right images that they might need, checking the quote, whatever has to be done, I'm doing that. So it really varies. So there's no way you can give it an exact dollar amount. But the PR person that comes to you and say, oh, I can do that for $500 a month. (laughs) No way. No one can do something for that little per month. So you have to be realistic in your budget that you're going to be at that, you know, 
higher rate on a monthly basis because of the hours involved and yeah. the work involved. So I had someone who said, well, you know, I'll just, just get me this one placement. I'll pay you for that one placement. Well, that one interview can still take me hours and hours, months and months. Right. Because I'm reaching out to a media outlet doesn't mean that they've been sitting there waiting for Andrea to reach out to them. And, <laughs> your, story, and, and your story, but I find those and I educate my clients on how to then use the interview afterwards. So many clients, I don't do social media, but they don't post the interviews on their social media and effectively tag the interviewer. Right. And they're losing an opportunity because the people following that interviewer or media outlet might then, you know, want to want to hire that person or buy that product or totally. or buy that book. So so it's it's really that question. But I don't have a cookie cutter model. Yeah. That it's this amount of money and you get X Y Z. I don't guarantee anything. Any public relations person who guarantees you that oh I'm going to get you twelve interviews in that month, that's a lie. There's no way they can yeah. guarantee it because we don't know what's going to go on in the world that day that the media suddenly is going to be focusing on a different topic. Right. And, you know, if, if you were the one that was going to be interviewed on, on a TV station on January the 6th, well, gosh, darn it. Unless you had something to do with politics, you were getting canceled. Totally. So you, you can't guarantee that because things happen. Uh, You know, there are people that have to change an interview. I had an interview scheduled, you know, for a client uh, a few weeks ago. And the interviewer had a family emergency, so we had to reschedule. And it took three weeks to reschedule. I had a client that had to reschedule an interview. Something came up with the client that the interviewer then was nice enough to not cancel it altogether. But it's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And and a good public relations person is going to make sure that the interview happens and that it appears and that the client then can see, hear, view, whatever, that interview. So... It's it's hard to give it a dollar amount until you're actually talking to that person to know what their goals are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to share for the audience, and I think this is something that you and I can maybe build upon together here. For me, how this goes for me as somebody who gets hit up by a lot of PR people to put people on, how I view it, and it, it kind of goes to what you're saying of like, oh, I can promise you this. So the way I look at it is. Um, I have a running list of people that have either said yes, either that I've sourced or have come from PR or they've sourced themselves. It doesn't really matter. And I'll ask them, hey, do you have an event that you'd like the, the, the episode out at a certain time? And the answer is an event is usually either a book, a product launch, a rebrand, like some sort of, or like, like Raymond, who I mentioned, he's actually going, he's doing something at a specific time. And if, and if the, my client or the client's agent or whatever says, Hey, like, it'd be really great if this can air this. I'm, I'm always, almost always a yes. But if I just had somebody like, Hey, could you air this early? And I'm like, well, why? And they don't have an answer. I would probably not, put, I will probably put them into my list of things. So I say all that for, uh, and this is just how I run it. Like for somebody to just show up and be like, Hey, I can get you 10 episodes and then go out this month. It's unlikely to happen for me unless we have a conversation about it. And you've, and you've told me that, Hey, there's, there's this book coming out. I'm like, Hey, that makes sense. Like I've got a guest I've got scheduled for that week. My release schedule they're, you know, they don't have anything. They're just on the show. So um, I say that for more for the audience, because you probably already know how this works. Yeah. And I think that there are certain topics and conversations that are evergreen. They can That's air right. anytime. And then there are cool. others that, that a, a good PR person is going to say to a host like yourself, I have my client that has this at this time where this is coming up. But it's also important to note that when you're doing interviews and especially uh, a podcast interview, you want the content to be very evergreen because you, the person being interviewed, should be able to reuse it again and again. Totally. And you, the person who's hosting the interview, might decide, you know what? I'm going to post an extra one this week. It was one I really loved that I did three months ago. And I aired it once. Exactly. And I really, I really, and, and I was talking to a, a, a podcaster quite a number of months ago. And he said, well, I only tape once a week and I only air once a week. And he says, I have a backlog that my interviews that I tape aren't going to be airing for four months. And I said, well, then why don't you start posting twice a week? And he just stops and he says, what do you mean? I said, well, if it's all in the can, why can't you post two times a week instead of once a week? He says, I never thought of that. (laughs) 
<laughs> I said it's this as is... simple as people are starved for content. Do totally. you know that Americans spend an estimated 11 hours a day absorbing content? That's, inc- that's insane. I mean, how many times are we listening to something or watching something and scrolling on our phones? Or, oh. you know, reading a magazine and also listening to something on on a podcast or yeah. it's it, we're absorbing content so why not make sure that you are part of that content with an interview that you know I, i'm really enjoying gabbing with you and and your audience learning a little bit about me but there's so much content you got to be in it to win it yeah and there's two things i want to share with you andrea and for the audience around this that is so timely and just to be clear for the audience we did not talk about this before so this is I don't know if you've been paying attention or this is just your intuition. So this month at the beginning of April, I go, God, I've got so many good episodes in the can already. I got to release two a week. And then my thing is like, yeah, but if I release, it's like, it's like, oh, you can't release more than one a week because then your audience will get bored. I looked at my numbers, no change, no change whatsoever between releasing. So I've been releasing here in April of 2021. I release on Wednesday mornings. Generally it's 6 a.m. I've been releasing Wednesday and Friday, which I know is not the best way to do it, but my numbers haven't changed at all. Like I've been, I looked at my episodes for April and they've, they've stayed, they've grown a little bit. So I say all that because it's funny. Cause I actually had that epiphany. I'm like, you know what? I've got all these guests that want to be on. I've got all these great episodes I'm about to record. If I like with Andrea, if I don't, if I don't start to get some of these out into the world, it's going to be like September before I air this thing. And that's not going to serve her or serve me. And it's, we're going to be talking about things that aren't appropriate, like aren't applicable anymore. So that's the yeah, first I, thing. I, I thought the thing yeah. is, if you're general, then they are applicable. But right. if you're very, like, if you're focused, if you have a product and you are really focused on, you know, the Christmas, Hanukkah, holiday season, and all you talk about for an hour is the Christmas, Hanukkah, holiday season, well, you can't reuse that in February. That's right. And it's also, you're not probably not going to be a guest on my show because I don't, I don't just say like, so tell me about your product that's coming out at Christmas. Like, it's yeah. more holistic. And so approach. this way you're, you're, you're talking about something that's more general that someone can hear. And that way, if you decide you're taking a vacation, you could repost during your vacation and you don't have to worry about new content because right. if it was a great interview and you did it back in February, why can't you post it again in August? And I say that to my clients because you did something and you talked to someone months ago, post it the day it comes out, share it again, three months, six months, nine months. I, I mean, I have things that I'll repost. I know there used to be, you know, throwback Thursdays, but I'll find things that I did over my career that I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to repost this because it was just a great memory. And, and, and I'll tag the media outlet or tag the person who was the client or, or the host of the show or whatever, because it was fun. Yeah. So, so content, PR and content go hand in hand. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll, I'll leave this topic with is, um, and I think you'll appreciate, I know you're going to appreciate this. So I say this in the, in the show outro that like, if you, if you're interested in being on the show, reach out happens every now and again, not very often. I actually mean it because it's really fun to interview people. I don't know. So for those listening who want to be on more podcasts, please seriously reach out. It's in the show notes, how to get a hold of me. It's not that challenging to find me. It's my name on my website is my name. <laughs> so, and it's also in the title of the show. And the second thing that blows my mind, and I'm sure this will probably just, I don't mean to irk you. Uh, this will probably irk you. You'd like, that really annoys me too, is when I have guests on who don't cross promote the show. And I'm like, you do know that you have a whole network of people that I don't know that probably are more interested in hearing you than me. And all, and, I, and you've seen how I do this. I'll tag the people on LinkedIn. I'll tag them on. And, and I, I can tell you this for people that want to be on any podcast, whether it's mine or not. The numbers, I can be like, that person promoted, that person didn't, that person promoted, because I only have a certain amount of reach. And my guests have different people that they're connected to. And they're like, for me, if I know, if I'm a friend of yours, Andrea, I want to listen to your episode. And then I might go, hey, I like this podcast. I want to look at some other episodes that I like. I'm probably not going to randomly find Jason and be like, oh, this seems like a fun podcast of one of the 750,000 podcasts that are out there. Yeah. So again, and it, makes, it makes me totally crazy when clients don't repost, you know, an article or an interview that they participated in. And, and I don't do their social media. And I say to them, I can bring social media into the account because I know a lot of great social media people. 
but they say, no, no, I do it myself. Or, oh, you know, my daughter does it. Well, okay, but your daughter's busy with whatever your daughter is doing, uh, or my son's going to do this. And, and it doesn't get done. And it makes me crazy because, yeah. you know, this is a great opportunity for you. And certainly for your listeners, they could be a guest here with you. Or if they're listening to other podcasts, they could suggest themselves. But I totally. also find the average person doesn't know the right way to present themselves. And it's less is more. And I, ha I had a podcaster who I met about a year ago. And I pitched a client and he says, I only deal directly with the clients. I said, well, I'm the PR person and I handle everything yeah, on behalf of the right. client. And they he pay said, me for it. He said, I don't like working with PR people. They don't get me the information I need. I don't hear back. I, you know, interviews are missed. I said, then you've never met me. I said, can you give me 15 minutes mm -hmm. of your time? <laughs> so we schedule a call. I listen to a few of his episodes. I get on the phone with him. And I start spouting things from his episodes. He said, you listen to my podcast? I said, yes. He says, I like you. No one ever listens to right. PR right. people before they pitch. I said, I always listen before I pitch because I need to know that it's going to be appropriate for my clients. So make sure you're listening before you suggest yourself to a podcast to say, okay. Yeah. you know." And, and, and in this discussion, the person has to be comfortable talking a lot. Yep. So, I mean, if you're not comfortable with telling your story and telling it effectively, and if you're going to, um, like, you know, and pause over and over again, you're going to lose the listening audience and you don't yeah. want that. And I've had interviewers who, who've interviewed me or my clients and the interviewer is, um, like, you knowing over and over again, or they say my favorite, every answer it's, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. a great question. Awesome. What a great answer. That's awesome. I know I'm awesome. I know you love me, but but you don't uh, need to say that on the on the broadcast. That's so funny, Andrea. <laughs> well, on that note, I would like to move to the next section if you're ready to move to the next section. And Let's this go. is the part of the show where you get to ask me a question. And I love this because every now and again a guest will be like, oh, could I could I ask you two? And I'm like, no, you can ask me one. Question one, question only. No, you can ask, uh, ask me a question. If you've got a couple questions at me, I will answer it for you and answer it for the audience. So, Andrea, what would you like to what'd you like to ask me about? Well, I'd like to know how your business has been growing and juggling since the start of the pandemic. Yes. Especially My with business, two kids. Yeah, with two kids. Oh, and don't forget a four-month-old puppy. Because uh, we're because we're crazy. Because, you know, like why not add that? So for those who ha who haven't listened, I have um I'll start with the details of what I just mentioned. So we have a five-year-old daughter, we have a six-month-old son, and we have a four-month-old puppy as of April 19th. So it's a it's a fun, it's a fun version of chaos. And it's not a small puppy, it's a golden retriever who's quadrupled in size in two months. When we got her, she was seven and a half pounds and she's over 25 pounds now. She's almost 28 pounds now. So, but she's awesome. And you can see pictures of her on my Instagram page. So go check that out. Um so the pandemic was interesting for me because. I had, I had a really good start to 2020 and then it like, and you probably, and I don't know if this is how it goes for PR. It sounds like you also have a commitment. I have a commitment to work with me. I'm not going to take somebody for one session. We're not going to do a month. It's the same thing in coaching as in PR. You're just not going to get the results, right? You, you need to have a, a, an amount of time to build momentum together to build something. So I have a, a certain level of commitment that I ask for from clients who want to work with me. And so I had those clients continue to work with me but I didn't have a lot of new clients coming in. And I, and I don't know this for sure, but I have asked a couple of people who have worked with me since when the pandemic hit and everybody went remote and all these things, they're just like, F it. The world's a little crazy. I just want to like sit here and figure it out. And I, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't want to work. I don't want to get coached on anything. Um, and so I had this kind of this weird, not a weird plateau, but I had a, a good start to 2020, a plateau and it must've been about October where I just had this huge spike. And I think it is because we were a couple things. One, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to say this without saying it. The kind of clients I work with were ready for a change in November. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Mostly with people in the tri-state area, very mm -hmm. blue over here. And um, so I think that was the first thing. It, the second thing is that people had started to get their rhythm of, of living in a pandemic, being at home. I work with a lot of, I work with a lot of, all of my clients are like high achievers who work 
work in either startups or like big tech companies like Coinbase, Facebook, Google. And so they had a huge shift between like, hey, you're in the office, you're eating free lunch every day, you're on the plane every day to you're at home with your kids or you're at home by yourself, you're lonely. And so I think a lot of people are just like, oh my God, what's my new reality? And then in October, I think people are like, well, you know what? Um, I've gotten through that mental part of it and now I'm ready to actually build them. This actually feels like a good time and I actually have more space because I'm not commuting to build something new or different work on my work on my leadership skills, work on that side hustle. And so my business kind of went again, and it's been steadily rising since then. I think the coaching industry overall has really seen, as far as I can tell, a real influx in people that have had time to think about their lives during the pandemic. They're like, is this what I actually want? In terms of my career, in terms of do I do I want to date? Do I want to marry? Do I want kids? Like these decisions mm-hmm. that coaching can be really good for. So I think a lot of people have hit that and said, "Hey, like I would love to work with somebody to get some clarity on that." So yeah. it was it was a it was up, pandemic hit, plateau, and then up again, and it's steadily rising again this year. And especially now, it's exciting because now clients are really excited when they come to me and want to work together because they're like, "Okay, I just got vaccinated. I'm about to get vaccinated. I'm gonna." I've got this idea for the side hustle, the side hustle, like I want to be a film producer and like, I couldn't film because of the pandemic and, oh my God, now I actually get to do this thing I've been wanting to do and the world's starting to open up. So it's been, um, it was an interesting, it was an interesting time. And I, uh, you know, from talking to a lot of other people, not just coaches, I think it was a, for people that weren't selling things like face masks or, you know, like, like webcams and things that just like the industry just exploded during the pandemic. I think this is pretty normal. Yeah, home, for a home, lot improvement, of home improvement, home improvement, home improvement, furniture, furn- like yeah. I, I have a client who's in furniture and he's like, we're, we have a backlog of like six months of manufacturing, like, because double, double things, one production shut down coupled by people are like, you know what? I hate this couch. And now I got to sit here all day. <laughs> now I got to look at it all day. So, um, if it wasn't for that, I, I talked to a lot of people that their business, regardless of whether they really should have been affected by the pandemic, they just were because it just wasn't a focus. So yeah. that's how it, that's how it went for me. And then we had a baby well, in October. I'm glad to hear that. You know, yeah. I, I'm glad to hear that it's all looking up and yeah. uh, and you know having another child is is a child. That's wonderful. That's thank you. That's all positive, exciting stuff, which means you're you're heading for continued positivity. Yeah, I'm also somebody who's. Uh, more on the positive side. I was going to ask you, have you ever taken, it used to be called strengths finder. Now it's called Clifton strengths. It's a, like a strengths assessment and there's yeah. 30, uh, it's like a, it's, it's a, it's been taken over 25 million times. Like a, it's like a personality assessment. It's really more for work styles, but it actually work style is lifestyle. In my opinion, positivity is actually one of the 34 strengths on it. So I'll, my ah. guess is you are quite high in positivity. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that it's going to help us in our personal lives. It helps in our business lives and it helps get through these challenging times. And, and, you know, a year ago we were sort of lost and we started meeting people by Zoom networking and all of those things. And, and now there's a little less time for Zoom networking because we have more clients, we have more work to do. And especially those of us in the Northeast, the weather is nice. So we want to get outside a little bit. Yeah. And it feels good to go for a walk or go for a bike ride or sit on the back porch and, and read a book. So it's exciting that the weather has turned and, and we could look toward the summer and uh, a nice weather. So, uh, you know, I think that I think the businesses are going to see if they haven't already are going to see an uptick because I know that that I've seen an uptick in business because people yeah. are ready. people, you know, I want to do this. I'm ready to do this. I want to have this conversation. Uh, you know, I did woe is me for too long. Let's yep. get it all to happen. Yeah. Well, in in coaching, we have a thing called do it now. That's when a client has an insight and I just had an insight and I actually have an insight for you. And you talked about this earlier about how people don't generally give their call to action. So what do you say we actually give the audience the call to action for each of us right now in the middle of the episode? Well, my call to action will be schedule a one-on-one call with me. Go to AndreaPathPR.com. Yeah. There's an appointments tab. Let's get a little time together. Let's have a conversation and I'll let you know how public relations can benefit you, how I can help you and how that makes you relevant, grows your business and ultimately drives sales. Yep. And I'll do the same, which 
you're creating a breakthrough for me. I've never done this on, I've never done this on this podcast. Cause I kind of, I kind of <laughs> hold it a little bit separate from, I mean, I talk about my business when people ask me, but I, I hold it a little bit separate from pitching, but uh, I will just do it as well. So if anybody's listening, who's interested in what coaching means to them, you're like, I don't know what coaching is. If you're interested in that, if you know what coaching is and you worked with a coach and you're looking for somebody new, or if you just want to connect with me to talk about either working together as coach client or to be on the podcast, like hit me up on my website. It's in the show notes. And look at that, Andrea, you created a breakthrough for me right here on the show live. Not live. Well, it's live for us, not yes, live for the no, audience, but so thank you. It's, it's I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, who, who reaches out to me and who reaches out to you from this, this discussion today. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And we, we probably need, we need our affiliate tags. We'll be like, and please mention uh, talking to cool people 10 to get, you know, like how like podcasts you, is so you can attribute yeah. it where it came from. So uh, marketing stuff. So Andrea, I have a few more questions for you. If you have a little bit more time for us. I do. I do. Awesome. So Andrea, I, I'm going to, I already love this question for you because you're such a pass, passionate and positive person person. So you might have a little trouble answering this, but what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about my family and friends and public relations. So it's, it all, everything goes back. It's like a full circle that when I see, I, I, have, I have two children. My daughter is, uh, got married at the beginning of the pandemic, which was crazy. So she didn't have her fancy reception, but they got married. They're finally going on their honeymoon after a year with four cancellations. Oh my God. Uh, so I'm happy to see them happy. You know, my son is doing really well in his career. Uh, you know, he and his girlfriend got to take a trip. Uh, so seeing him happy, I'm happy. Seeing yeah. my parents, you know, I'm very fortunate. My mom's birthday's coming up. She'll be 83. My dad's 88. Uh, they live on their own. And I, I, we're back to our routine of going out to lunch once a week. So I, oh, it's so that nice because they're vaccinated. I'm vaccinated, and the place we yeah. go for lunch has partitions and a new ventilation system and we're we're very comfortable so so it, it's the same things that drive me every single day yeah are, are going to be my family and my friends and and my work yeah what um if i could ask you what are your what are your two what field are your two kids in my daughter is in human resources and mm -hmm. she's a talent acquisition person and knows how to figure that out and my son is in um, SEO sales and development. Uh, so that's really important. And he manages the team um, and he gets into all the technical stuff that I have no clue what he does. <laughs> but what he does is obviously important in your communications yeah. and for your website and for the, your social to make sure that you're you're having the right SEO. So you're driving more awareness to grow your business. So, yeah. so he's, he's doing that. And he, um, he, he hopes that in the coming months he can go back to, you know, maybe one day a week working in New York City and, yeah. but, but he's, he's happy. And, and, you know, my husband works from home and he thinks that, you know, maybe next year they'll go back once a week or twice a week, but he's doing well. And he, he my husband just got a promotion. So that's a wonderful thing. Congratulations. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm like so happy for him. And, yeah. and so it's, it's all, it, yeah, I, I, you know, I have to look at all the, the good stuff. Yeah, that's awesome, Andrea. Well, I don't what's know, am, the... I, am I too much like sugar and sweetness? No, I mean, it's no, not no, because well, this I do want to bring this up to you, not to say that you are like that at all. It's and if you ever go do take Clifton Strengths, let me know because I'll walk you through it. One of the things that's inter interesting you go through with clients when they take that is um, all of our strength, top strengths, and I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that positivity is in your top ten. One of the things that I work with with clients when I use that tool is there's a shadow to your strength and the shadow and the shadow of your strength, you generally access it most easily when you're emotional about your strength. And for positivity specifically, one of the blind spots in positivity is that it can come across like you're a Pollyanna or that you like that you're like, and I'm not saying that that's you at all, but that is something for people that are listening who have taken Clifton Strengths. Um, the positivity one specifically is like, you're like the person who is like, always positive to the point that it's annoying because like things actually do happen. And sometimes people don't want your positivity. They just want well, you to be with them. Here's a, here's an interesting story yeah. um, that the reason that I am a solopreneur and it's going as well as it is, is because 
I couldn't handle any more working with a team who didn't get their job done. And I would lose interviews. Okay, so here it was. I was getting all of the press interviews, and then I had to be in touch with the account executive who would then be in touch with the client to book the interview. Well, the account executive, I was on the East Coast. They were in the LA area. The account executive would not answer the telephone, would not respond to an email, would not respond to a text or the cell phone call. So there was a landline call, cell phone call, text, email. Well, if I can't reach, and then I'm calling other people in the office and saying, can you tell so-and-so to call me? And the person wouldn't, and I'd lose interviews. And I Uh, got to a point that I was so, I was complaining all the time because all it was, I couldn't reach the client. I sent an email. Did you pick up the phone? Did you call the client's assistant and have them paged? The client is hiring us to get press. So I was not always so positive because I was constantly, constantly complaining because things were not getting done. And the owner of that company was very much, oh, positive company culture. You know, (laughs) we get things done and we're, okay. The people, when I would go to visit, the hours were eight to four um, in LA. Yeah. Okay. They would pick me up in my hotel. I would be in the office at eight and most of the staff would traipse in about 825 and at nine, 10 to nine, they'd leave to go get coffee. But, huh? Why didn't you pick up your coffee on the way into the office or was a <laughs> coffee maker in the office? Now you're leaving. Then they came back with coffee for everyone except me and they would stand around and gab. And the next thing you know, it's lunchtime or we had a staff meeting and then it's lunchtime. And then after lunch, they have to gab about lunch. And the next thing you know, it's four o'clock. I'm visiting from the East Coast. They're leaving. We're in the middle of working, oh, but their time is up. I don't punch a clock. Right. You're like, you do know you all that I'm from the East Coast, specifically the New York metropolitan area. You're driving me crazy right now. You're not getting the job, but they weren't getting the job done. Yeah. And that's where I did have this negativity. Yeah. And I did have this complaining. And I, I said to a colleague of mine, when I started my business, I had my first client within a few days because people knew me and they were waiting for me to yeah. go out on my own. Oh, yeah. And I said, do I, am I a complainer? And I, I, cause I thought, am I? And I realized it wasn't that I was complaining. It's that these other people were not getting the job done. And if you're not getting the job done, then yes, I'm going to complain. I'm not going to be a Pollyanna and I'm not going to be, you know, a, a you know, positive person. But but if you know you're getting it done and and then you can be positive. If you know that that, you know, I, I had I had a client reach out to me over the weekend, but I was busy with a celebration. And I said to the client, can this wait? I'm I'm in a family celebration. And the client was like, of course, a million percent. Because I knew it wasn't urgent. I knew, but if they, if I thought it was urgent and he felt it was urgent, I would have dropped everything and spoken to the client. Yeah, but I yeah. think that, you know, you grow with positivity after you've had the negative experiences. Yep. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So this is a great lead into the next question about, Andrea, what's the thing that you're most proud of? I'm going back to my my kids. I'm sorry. No I'm, so I, I'm so pokey. I'm so I'm I'm so proud of my kids. I am just so proud of the life they lead and everything they've achieved in their personal lives and their business lives. And um, I'm just so proud of them. And and yeah, I, I for me, no award really matters to me. I mean, I've won awards. I've been recognized. I've given major speeches and what have you, but I, I look at those things and I'm not, not as proud of anything as much as my kids. Yeah. I've said this on the show before. I've asked this question of about 80 people now. I think with the exclusion of one person that I can remember, every single person who has kids, that's their answer. So it's not hokey. And I always say this for those who I interview who are listening, who don't have kids, who are like, I don't know if I want kids. I don't know. It seems like a pain in the butt. You may, like, there may be some, some data there. Cause every, every parent who's on here is like, the thing I'm most proud of is either like, um, it's usually like either the kids themselves or their family. Yeah. And for those who don't have kids, it's usually some sort of award at work. 
award at work. Yeah. Oh, I did this thing, my career promoted. And it go, kind of goes back to the thing you said, and I, I drawn a blank on the, on the um, speech, but it's about the thing. Nobody's going to remember when you're on your, yeah, yeah it's the and, same and thing. I think, and also I don't want to leave out my husband. I'm married over 33 years. Congratulations. And, yeah. and thank you so much. And I think that listen, marriage is work. It's not easy. You're going to have your highs. You're going to have your lows. It's, it's work. And, and I'm just so happy to have him and, and that we're, we're such a team and, and to be able to say we've achieved that and we'll continue. I mean, my parents are married 63 years. Oh, that's awesome. So you had, yeah. you had a good role, good role models. I, I'll leave, uh, we'll wrap up with this question. I'll tell you, I've heard that marriages work from others. I, I've been married 13 years and it's been so easy all every minute of every day. So I've heard from others that it can be challenging sometimes, but, um, and if it's ever been challenging, it's definitely been because of my wife. It has nothing to do with me. Of course. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I would say um, I would say your husband sounds like quite the keeper. If he has a birthday month for you, that is quite the keeper. He he he's he is he is. I mean, when he had a special birthday a few years ago, and I was able to throw him the surprise party, um, and it was so funny. He thought we were going to someone else's surprise party, and when he walked in, you know, he just was totally thrown off. Uh, That's awesome. Which was just so cool. But he 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 gives to everyone. He's the guy that's always, if someone needs something, he's always there for them. And, and I'm, I'm proud of him and, and looking forward to the next, you know, 33 plus years. Yeah. Well, I hope your, I hope your husband and your kids listen to this episode. I will definitely share it with them. You'd be I like, definitely. even if you don't want to listen to the whole thing, you may want to go to this section that's near yeah, the end. Of the yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I, they're the, I'm, they're the best. They're, yeah, they're that's the best. awesome. It's, it's, Andrea, you know, I said this at the beginning, her and I are on video today and you are definitely lighting up. This is definitely a thing that make, is really lighting you up talking about them. Even yeah, more than PR. No, and you I, light up I, more PR too. Yeah, because it's, it, 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 it's interesting because that's, that's the most important thing. And um, yeah, I, I was at, uh, it, it's called an unveiling in the Jewish religion. A year after the person passes away, you unveil the, the tombstone. Mm-hmm. And I was at an unveiling yesterday. We could not go to the funeral a year ago due to COVID. And on the tombstone of this woman who was like a second mother to me, I loved her to pieces. You know, it was wife, mother, grandmother. Mm. It never discussed the job that she held for all, you know, she, that was not what you're remembered for. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're remembered for your loved ones. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, but but I, I will continue doing public relations for a long, long time to come. I don't plan on ever retiring. I could see myself being that person living in the uh, 55 and older community, still having a bunch of clients when I'm That's great. Working, you know, in between Mahjong and uh, pool aerobics. So I could see myself being that person at some point. <laughs> <laughs> pool aerobics, as long as your head is above the water. Do not. Well, that's why I like pool aerobics, your head above yeah. the water, and then some mahjong. What else would I ask for? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome, Andrea. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. And the next question um, I'm going to ask you is to take a look and give us something that you were afraid might actually be true about you. Hmm. You know, I I take things personally. Not afraid that it's true about me. It is. It is true about me. You're like I'm I, not afraid. This is definitely I'm not afraid. Just... I, it's. It's. Yeah. I was on a. I was on a call for an organization that I'm. I'm active in, and all these people were talking about things that were under my category, <laughs> and I said, "Excuse me, um, no one invited me to this meeting. Isn't doesn't this fall under me?" And I, I started taking it very personally, and yeah. I'm texting someone. I'm like, "Why am I even here?" <laughs> so I do. I am emotional. And I do take things personally and I take things to heart. So, yeah. Yeah. And so you remember, remember how earlier you said you um, like to make things up and just go with the flow. Yeah. I have a second part of this question for you. There we go. <laughs> what do you do to compensate for that? This is the oh pseudo pseudo-thera- therapy part this of the show. Is, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and the thing is I am emotional and I will find that person uh, who I can then vent to because mm. I need to vent. Mm-hmm. And I think that once I vent and I put it in perspective and I walk away from it a little time 
And I noticed during our call today, two different people from that meeting have already reached out to me to have one-on-one -on -one calls with me because I'm sure they saw. Because at one point I got in the meeting and I just put my hands up like, what the? Um, you had no terrible poker face. You're like, oh, no, no. I intentionally exaggerated my face. Ah, I so they were like, yeah. I, I would have gotten an Academy Award. I exaggerated my face <laughs> because I was just in really anger. It was your soap, so you, were, you leaned into your soap opera expertise. I, like you know, I, I did. You know, Susan Lucci, watch out. And uh, I actually met her. Um, she was at a conference, Quick, st uh, quick Story. Yeah. So yeah. she was actually speaking at this conference. I, I was uh, very active in the As Seen on TV category for a long, long time. And so she was the keynote speaker, and I was very excited. I went up to the, the person who was running the event, and, and I knew him, and he knew me. And I said, would you be kind enough? Could you introduce me to Susan? Yeah, I'm a big fan. He says, Andrea, of course. So he introduces me to her. And, um, you know, I explained how I've been a fan a long time. And it's just such a pleasure to meet you. And, uh, you know, I said, would you mind if we took a picture? And she calls her husband over and hands him my phone that he should take the picture of the two of us. Look at that. Fast, fast forward two years later, she's at the same convention. My arm is in a sling, went over the top of my bicycle uh, and had to have rotator cuts, cuff surgery. So I'm in the sling and she sees me and she says, oh my God, I know you. We've talked before. I said, yes, I'm at the same convention. She says, what happened? Don't get on the elevator. Come over here. And she pulled me aside just to see how I was. Amazing. And she recognized my face from two years before. She says, I Brilliant. know you. We've met. And it was just so lovely. So that's my Susan Lucci story. I love it. But, but um. But, and she played Erica Kane on All My Children for a million years and um, was nominated for Soap Opera Awards. And I think eventually won one. But, yeah. um, but you know, you, um, you know, I did. I put on this face that I was so angry. And so that I am very emotional. And that's mm -hmm. my, that's my negative. And yeah. I have to spew it out. So I need to find a person. And in this case, there was someone on that meeting who I'm close with and I was texting her. Uh, and she knew I was angry. She, you know, and then uh, someone else wrote another email afterwards apologizing for forgetting about including me on another meeting. So, yeah. but I yeah. need to vent. Yeah. I need to, I need to vent and I get upset and I find the right people that I can vent to. So, yeah, that's perfect. I, I had, a, I asked this of a guest a while back and they're like, you know, I don't think I do anything to compensate for this. And I said, you may want to take a little bit deeper look at yourself or you may want to go hire a coach or see a therapist because do you know human psychology at all? The things that many of the ways that we operate in the world are to compensate for the things that we believe are actually true about us deep down. I didn't say that to him on the show, but I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure your self-awareness is very high, buddy. <laughs> like, yeah. We, and we all have things that we're afraid or we might, all of us, it's just kind of human nature. Um, so Andrea, I'm going to ask you this question. I think it's a little bit, Du duplicitous, duplicitous at this point, but I'm going to ask it for two anyway. How do you see the world? I see the world is very divided. Unfortunately, I wish that I saw it differently. I wish that we weren't so divided in our beliefs. I wish that we can all open our eyes to the truth. Um, you know, I'm not going to get political here, but there's so many people that get very political and they see things so one-sided. And I think for us to be able to move forward, you have to see both sides. And if you have to write a chart and put things on both, you know, the pro and the con of each thing, and then say, oh, wait a minute, that thing that I thought was a con really belongs in the pro and, and or vice versa. But I, I, unfortunately, I see the world is very, very divided and I don't see it um, coming together anytime soon. And, and that's, that's a shame. So yeah, I don't have a positive yeah. answer on that one. I no positivity needed. I think the, the thing I'll offer to you and to the audience, and I had this discussion with somebody last week is what would it be like if we assumed best intention as opposed to worst intention? Meaning that you, yeah. when you saw how people operated, that you assumed that they were operating with, um, they were operating with the same level of integrity and ethics that you are. And the truth is they may or may not be, you don't know that, or maybe you do know that. And the second thing is, what if you assume that they're doing the very best of the tools that they have? Meaning that the things that, 
and I'll, I'll relate it back to you being a very positive person. That's probably something that comes very naturally to you. It's something you can lean into. It's something that's just the way it's the way you see things. There are people that's just not how they're they're they're, they're just not either born that way or they want more of that, but they have trauma, like therapeutic type trauma or things that like life, yeah. life can be hard or people that have it all are not positive either. There's people that are brilliantly, what we would call brilliantly successful financially. And they're yeah. miserable people. They're not positive at all. I'm sure I know people like that. I'm sure you do too. So the thing is like, Hey, what if this person, instead of being a trigger for me or me relating to them, like they should be like me, what if I just assumed best intention and assumed that they were, they had the best, they were doing the best with what they had. And I say this more generally for the world, like what, like what would be possible from there? I think it would be pretty unbelievable to see what that is. And I also, I'm going to go back to, I know that's very Pollyanna. No, but I think, you know, my, my daughter, you know, I'll say something and she'll say, you're being so judgy. And, (laughs) and, and it's true. We, we, we do tend to judge and, and maybe we need to stop and listen before we judge, but I know that in human nature, uh, we we do we do judge and we see our point of view, and we don't want to. But I, I had a situation the other day with a friend of mine that I was going to a restaurant with other friends, and she it was another another couple, so four of us. I wouldn't go in a restaurant. You're going to be inside, and I said, well, it's fifty percent capacity, and we decided, believe it or not, we made reservations at five for dinner. Okay, who eats dinner at five o'clock? I, I I mean, I don't eat dinner at five o'clock. I'm usually seven, seven thirty, but I was nervous and I didn't want to be in a restaurant with other people. So we made, but she was immediately judgy to me. Yep. Then she says to me, Well, aren't we gonna go to a, a ball game this summer? Because we go every summer. And I said, I don't know if I want to go, you know, to be in the stadium. She says, But the stadium's outdoors. And then I got all judgy with her because you have to walk through all those hallways to first get to your seat at the ball field. So I realized afterwards that I was judging her and she Mm -hmm. was judging me. And, you know, I needed to just like cool it because in reality, now that I think about it, I think I will go to the ball field this summer. Not Yankees or Mets? Yankees. I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this here, and I hope you don't hate me. And since we're virtual, we, you we can't. We could agree to, to disagree. Well, I hate the Yankees. I hate, I, so I've lived in New York for 16 years now. And uh, <laughs> perfect. so for those listening, Andrew, you just put on a new Zoom background at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> um, I'm going to say this, and you're going to understand why. I hate New York sports teams because I'm from Minnesota originally. I don't know if you knew this about me. And the Twins have gotten their ass kicked in the playoffs by the Yankees so many times. I think the Twins have lost, I want to say it's 18 straight playoff games. And I just don't like the Yankees. And I never have, and I never will. I like Derek Jeter. And there's been players I like, but I'm like, no. But I do like going to Yankees games because I like to see them lose. And I'm saying all this to rub it in your face just a tiny bit. I read this morning they're they're in last place in the AL. They they have been horrendous, but... like 5 and 10, right? But the Twins aren't doing... However, the season is young. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, but I, I, I do have a, a story. We were, we were in Baltimore. Um, our kids were young. We had taken my son to go visit the university of Maryland where he did end up going for, for school. Sure, and, nice. Yeah. He's a chair. And so we had gotten tickets in Baltimore uh, to see Baltimore play the Sox. Okay. So the Orioles against the Red Sox and we go walking around in our Yankee shirts. Okay, intentionally with our Yankee shirts, even though the Yankees weren't playing. So we go to the Babe Ruth statue, which is constructed, you know, right there out of, outside yeah. of Camden Yards. And we're with the kids and there was another family. So would you mind taking our picture? We'll take your picture. So you can have a family picture in front of, in front of the statue. And this father of the other family was a huge Boston Red Sox fan and starts cursing us out. In front of the kids? <laughs> Thank you. So I said to him, I stopped. I looked at him. I said, really? I said, you're causing a scene and cursing us out in front of your children just because we disagree on what sports team we support. (laughs) I said, are you? And his wife just looked totally shocked. And he just dropped his jaw and he realized what he, you weren't at a bar with your buddies. Right. You're with your children and you're seeing this iconic statue of Babe Ruth Honestly, put it in perspective, dude. Come on, dude. So, 
he apologized. He, he took a picture for us. We took a picture. Uh. For him. But to this day, and that was such a long time ago, I'm thinking, why can you, you know, we can all agree to disagree. And I was on a, I was on a, a networking call the other week um, and it was opening day. So I had my Yankee picture in the back, like I, I'm showing to Jason and, yes. and your, your listeners can't see. And someone in my group said, is that Yankee Stadium? I said, yes. And he quickly puts this picture of Fenway Park behind him. There you go. And, and I said to him, he says, what do you think? I said, we're going to always agree to disagree. He says, I like your attitude. And I said, that's totally. fine. It's a sports team. It's a sports team. It's a sports team. Yeah. So, it, it, uh, well, I'll wrap it with this. It's a funny thing. I'll say this to people. I'll be like, be like, you live in New York. How can you not like the Yankees or the Giants? Or I'm like, I'm like, I'm from Minnesota. Let me ask you a question. I'll ask you this. I will specifically yeah. ask you this question. So you grew up a Yankees fan, right? Actually, I grew up with, I like the Yankees and the Mets. Yeah. So you're a New York sports. New York, you're a New York I'm sport. a New York sports fan, but right. I've become more of a Yankee fan now. Right. So if I was to say to you, hey, Andrea, um, you and your husband, you're going to move to Florida. Would you suddenly become a Tampa Rays fan or a, or a Miami Marlins fan? No. But for some reason in New York, you, people are so passionate that if you live in New York City, you have to be a fan of the teams. I'm like, I'm from Minnesota. I'm a lifelong Twins fan. Yeah. I'm never going to be a Yankees fan. And that's OK. And they're like, they're like, but how can you live here? I'm like, well, if you move somewhere else, you wouldn't be, not be a Yankees fan. They're like, and they always they always go like this to me. They go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my brother lives in San Diego. So my brother lived in New Jersey, grew up a Yankee fan. He and his family moved when his kids were really young to North Carolina, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And he raised his kids as Yankee fans. And now they live in San Diego and they are still Yankee fans. And it doesn't matter that they live in San Diego. Um, We had gone to a a, a game uh, down in Tampa a few years ago. It happened to be the weekend we were there. We said, let's go to a game with a bunch of our friends in Tampa. Lo and behold, the Yankees were in town. So we were very excited. There were more Yankee fans in the stadium <laughs> than Rays fans. No but the, the Yankees got clobbered. The Rays won. And my few friends that came, and they weren't even sports fans. They were just picking on me the whole time. Of course. Well, yeah, it, it, it's so easy. New York sports fans make it so easy because when things are going well, it's there's so much cockiness. And then when things aren't going well, there's just like silence. Yeah, like and, I, and it's I, funny. Yeah. We're yeah. We're, de- we're Devils fans, you know. Okay, yeah. Big Devils hockey fans, and my son-in-law is a Rangers fan, mm-hmm. and so, and my my son's girlfriend is a Rangers fan, and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, and we just joke about it because we like the Devils, they like the Rangers, you know, we're big Yankee fans. My son-in-law yeah. likes the Mets. Well, yeah. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. For most of us, it's all good. There's just those few people that yeah. seem to think they get really attached to how you have to think like them or there's something wrong with you. But we can, yeah. I'm sure we, we can probably relate this to many other areas of our life. But we're going to wrap up for today because I know that you've got to run your PR business. Yeah. I've got to run my coaching business. And I want to wrap up with um, to ask you or have you share with the audience. And I want to caveat this, that everything you're about to say will go in the show notes and it'll be on my website. So you people can click on the links too. But Andrea, what's the best way for people to reach out and contact you or get in touch with you and learn more about what you do? Yeah, I I look forward to meeting some of your listeners and they can reach me through my website, andreapasspr.com. I'm also on Facebook, Andrea Pass Public Relations. I'm on LinkedIn, Andrea Pass. So those are the best ways to send messages. I'm getting a lot of people sending me messages on Instagram, uh, but it's harder for me to respond on Instagram. So I, I like it to be in an email format. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, follow me on social media, engage with me and uh, schedule a one-on-one through my appoint- appointments tab on andreapasspr.com. Awesome. Thanks, Andrea. All right. Last thing, tradition on the show since episode one, and this will probably be about episode 80 when this gets released or maybe a little sooner. Words of wisdom and the words to wisdom from Andrea should should fit on a post-it note. Or as since you mentioned Instagram, an Instagram post. And I had a I had a guest last year. It was like, so the Instagram post, would it be like the graphic or the text? And I'm like, dude, just we don't need to make this complicated. <laughs> the graphic on Instagram, post-it note slash Instagram graphic. So Andrea, what do you have for us? Okay. Can I give you two? Yes, you can. Okay. First one's a little longer than the second one. The first one. You were born an original, don't die a copy. That sounds like a Lady Gaga lyric or something. (laughs) But the other one, failure is not an option. Yeah, 
Who originally said failure is not an option? Uh, that was from NASA. I don't remember if it was John Glenn. Um, it was an astronaut who said failure is not an, an option. And suddenly I'm having, I, I see that you are looking it up quickly. To let I, um, us know. Um, yeah, if only there was a resource that we could use to find out yeah. where quotes were. I didn't type while I was talking. Yeah. So, who, uh, who? so it says here that it's a phrase associated with yep with Gene Gene Kranz and the Apollo oh, Gene, okay. And yeah. um, it's also the tagline of the 1995 film Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks and yep. like Bill Paxton in that great movie. So I didn't I didn't know that because it's such a yeah. And there's actually not enough. About it. Yeah. Yep. You know, you got to, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So don't fail, you know, yeah. don't, don't accept failure. Just come up with another way. And that's my closing statement for today. Yeah. So I want to read you um, by uh, in the film, Apollo 13, he's uh, Gene Krantz is played by Ed Harris. And I believe he's, a, he's the leader of mission control, right? He's the, he's mm -hmm. in Houston. Yes. And he said, we've never lost an American at space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. And it just, uh, it, it applies to every aspect of our lives. Yeah. Very nice. Well, Andrea, it was so good to get to know you live today on the podcast. I want to wish you the very best with everything you're up to. And I have no doubt we'll be connecting very soon. Thank you so much, Jason, for having me. I appreciate Thank it. Thanks. Thanks for listening to another episode of Talking to Cool People with Jason Frizzell. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and give us a shout out or take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. If something from today's episode piqued your interest and you'd like to connect, email us at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com. We love hearing from our listeners because you're cool people too. <laughs> <laughs>